Pastor Greg with you on Tuesday. Now we're going to get into Acts chapter 2. And there is so much in Acts chapter 2 and probably one of the chapters in the Bible that every Christian should have a pretty good handle on. And so we're going to spend three days, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, in Acts chapter 2 where we see the Holy Spirit, we see testimony, um, Peter's testimony and we see how the New Testament believers gathered together and lived. Second chapter of Luke talks about the gift of the Holy Spirit talks about the time the apostles were gathered together at Pentecost. Now, Pentecost was simply a festival that just happened to be 50 days after the Passover, and why well, it was called Pentecost because it was 50 days afterwards. Nothing particularly um, interesting about the name, but it became known throughout all of history then as the giving of the Holy Spirit because it was at Pentecost when the disciples were gathered that a brand new thing was done. The Holy Spirit was released to all believers. As I said yesterday, the Holy Spirit was not always given to every believer. In the Old Testament, there was only a very few people who received the Holy Spirit. King Saul, when he was anointed, received the Holy Spirit. King David, when he was anointed, received the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit could be removed. King Saul, when the Lord said to him, I do not want you to be the king anymore over Israel, took the Holy Spirit from him. And so the Holy Spirit was given for a particular purpose, to a particular person, at a particular time. And there was no guarantee that the Holy Spirit, when given, would remain for the entirety of someone's life. It was very much given for a task or something that had to be performed. Priests were, cons were consecrated and received the Holy Spirit. Prophets received the Holy Spirit. And you, you see accounts in the Old Testament how people would prophesy under the uh, direction of the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, God does a new thing because of our belief in Jesus, because of the preaching of the word, the Holy Spirit comes and the Holy Spirit suddenly is not about producing a task, but it's about drawing into a relationship with this um, God became human being, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit's primary role is to create faith now. So unlike before, when the Holy Spirit was there to give guidance and wisdom and to administer the, um, the, the affairs of the nation or for a, a prophetic word or to be able to minister in the temple, now the Holy Spirit is to create belief from, from all parts of the world. And along with the gift of faith that comes with the Holy Spirit, we see all sorts of signs and wonders that normal people suddenly have the capacity to perform. Where once upon a time you had to be, had to be in, in the office of prophet to be a prophet. And we, you had to um, have some type of unique calling that was, was gifted by God to do something else. Now the Holy Spirit calls and anoints you for service where and when he pleases. So each one of us, it's a completely brand new situation. And to some extent, I think as Christians, we still haven't got our head around the, the fact. Sometimes we still limit God's power of the Holy Spirit, but we'll talk a little bit more about that. This morning, we will look at how the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. And so that's at the beginning of Luke chapter 2. And we're going to look at the first 13 verses. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they had heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. 
utterly amazed. They asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that, that each of them hears in our own native language? Parthians, Mede, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, no, Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Why don't we pray? Lord, we are amazed and perplexed along with the disciples as you poured out your Holy Spirit in a new way, in a powerful way, on the disciples and to believers of all time. May we receive a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen.